Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. In prayer code one, we settled so much on how you have to speak when you're praying. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we stress so much on the spiritual transgression of if I build the very things I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And then we connected that to the word of God and what men ought to say in prayer. And we proved that many people don't know how to pray. For example, if the Bible says that the Lord has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, he meant everything. That means according to the mind of the Spirit, God has given you tuition. So why do you break what was built? He said he gave you tuition. Then you go in the presence of God and then you say, Father, I need tuition. That's transgression. You get it? That's what? Transgression. Because in a way, if you know the things the Bible says that were freely given unto us by the Holy Ghost, and you know that fees is part of the things that were freely given unto you. Don't go in the presence of God and ask what was already given. Go in the presence with thanksgiving making request. Thanksgiving making request. Not making request with thanksgiving. You don't ask to thank. You thank to ask. You get it? That is why regardless of a situation, the saying is important. Say to the righteous, it is well. Say so it was important that men speak what is finished. And when you're in prayer, you claim what is already finished. I no longer ask God for business. I no longer ask God for a job. Even if I want a new job, I thank for it. Because the fact that I've thought it, it's already built. You get it? But how many people are still praying, God heal me. God heal me. I swear he won't heal you. That's why you're not getting healed, because you still think he needs to come back again and heal you. Yet the Bible says that he that knew no sin became sin, that we being dead to sins might live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So you thank God because you're healed even before you see the healing. If you pray that prayer for two, three months, you realize your life changed because you're praying in what is finished. You're not trying to establish as though he has done nothing. That's legal. It's transgression. Another tenet in prayer that is very important that I needed to submit to you. And what am I looking for? I just want to show you how to pray and why many people don't receive the results. James says you pray and receive, not because you pray and miss. So if you take time and teach the church how to pray the right way, it means that every time you pray, you're going to expect a result. A result that is of what? That is of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we realize that a lot of people spend time in prayer. People go to prayer mountains, they go through valley, and then they pray and pray and pray and pray, and then they don't get anything. And then one guy just comes and then makes a prayer for five minutes and everything is settled. So you realize that what takes certain people three months to pray for, it takes certain men seconds to pray for. What it takes certain men 30 years to pray for, it takes certain men two months to pray for. And then you start to see that even in the gospel, the ministry, our lives, they start to become different from the people of the same faith. When we are put to the weight, certain men weigh heavier by reason of prayer. And some people think it's because they pray much. No, they don't pray much, they pray the right way. So the consequence of prayer is the way you pray. Hallelujah. To Dante to share something pertaining prayer code to, let's open our Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. If you guys say amen. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Read again. Continue in prayer and watch with the same in thanksgiving. Amplified says, Be honest and unwearied and steadfast in your prayer, 
being both alert and intent in your praying with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord Jesus. Message version. Pray diligently. Stay alert with your eyes open wide and ready. See, they're not talking about eyes physical. Praise the Lord Jesus. The business with God has no formulas of whether it's better to pray with open eyes or closed eyes. Some of you are just too religious that you think every time you have to close. You don't need to close your eyes every time you're praying, but you need to pray. Do you get where I'm coming from? So it's not whether the eyes physical are open or the eyes are closed. The issue is the substance. But if we go back to King James, he says, continue in prayer and with watching in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch in the same. Pray. That's wonderful. But in the prayer, watch. You get it? He's saying it's okay to pray and it's a wonderful place to pray, but when you're praying, watch also. Watch also. Don't just pray. Watch also. You get it? So it means that for every prayer to be a success, we must watch in the prayer as we pray. God has shown a very distinctive difference between prayer and watchings, but he has said if you want to have a perfect prayer, you must watch in prayer. And many Christians do not watch in prayer. So today I just want to teach you how to watch in prayer. How to watch in prayer. When a man learns to watch in prayer, okay, this is the one sign you will get. God will execute before you finish praying or when you start to pray. You get it? For example, if you want to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're a watcher, the moment you stretch your hand and you say, Father, in pa, it's just instant. You don't waste time. Depending on what you choose to do first. You want to choose to watch first and pray? Wonderful. If you become a watcher, you realize God will usually execute before you even finish praying. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 18. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching then to, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What again? Praying with what? With all what? Prayer. Hallelujah. All prayer means kinds of prayer. I also know seven of those. But I'll incorporate them in the courts. Eh? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know seven kinds of prayer, but I will incorporate them in the courts. If you are diligent in the courts, you'll pick those kinds. If you're not diligent in the courts, you'll not pick those kinds. Praise the Lord. So, and supplication in the spirit and watching there. And again, he's speaking of the principle of Mark 14.38. That's where I want to start building from. The Bible says in Mark 14.38, it says, Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. For the spirit is what? But the what? The flesh is what? Is weak. Hallelujah. For the spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. The Greek word there for temptation is called perasmus. Perasmus is translated not only as trial of, I'm going to tempt you to steal, then the devil tempts you to steal, and then you steal. No, no, that's, yes, wonderful. It's part of it, but it's deeper. Do you know that perasmus also carries the word affliction? So he says, watch ye and pray, lest you're afflicted. Watch ye and pray lest you lose your job. Watch ye and pray lest you become sick and die. Watch ye and pray lest you lose sight. Watch ye and pray lest you get an accident. Watch ye and pray lest you fall in a ditch. Watch ye and pray lest they rob you. Watch ye and pray. Watch ye and pray. 
So we realize that the center form of afflictions in the lives of Christians is many of them sometimes know how to pray, but they don't watch in prayer. They don't watch in what? In prayer. The Greek word for watching is gogereo. Gogereo is more of, it's alertness, yes, but it's more than being alert. It's more than being alert. It's a place where you become more sensitive to responsibility in prayer. That is why usually when we are defining the biblical definition of sleeping, we don't necessarily speak of people who are sleeping physically. When he says, awake unto righteousness, he's saying that a man is in a sleeping place. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we're talking about sleep particularly, we're not only talking about the place of sleeping physical, but the place of sleeping is when a man distances himself from responsibility in prayer. Not only responsibility to prayer, but also responsibility in prayer. I don't know if you understand what I mean. How then does a man distance themselves? Our distances from responsibility in prayer are usually, most certainly, places where we are insensitive to the responsibility. What distances you from responsibility is the fact that you're insensitive to the responsibility. Prayer has got to stop being just a line of passive abandonment and just so called your wonderful. No, no, no. There's a certain responsibility. Many people know of the responsibility of prayer, but many people do not know of the responsibility in prayer. Hallelujah. I'm past the level of responsibility of prayer. That is a place where men are tending form. Even Muslims have the responsibility of prayer. But the difference between you and the Muslim is that the Muslim doesn't have responsibility in prayer. But he has a responsibility of prayer. He can pray five times a day, but he can't make a man walk if he's lame. Because in prayer, he doesn't have responsibility but he has the responsibility to pray. I don't know if you understand where I'm coming from. It's one thing for you to say I'm responsible enough that I pray five times a day. It's another when you get in the prayer, you're also responsible of the situations and circumstances surrounding what you're praying for. The fact that you have the ability to change things in the spirit means that you have an active line of responsibility in prayer. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that there's a group of people, and Christians I've seen many, who are irresponsible in prayer because they're insensitive to responsibility in prayer. And thus, the true definition of such a minister or Christian is one who sleeps. That is sleeping in prayer. That is what? Sleeping in prayer. But the Bible has not called us, or Jesus has not called us to sleep in prayer. He calls us to grogereo. He calls us to alertness. He calls us to watch. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He calls us to watch. To metaphorically give strict attention to. He tells us to be cautious. He calls us to be active. To take heed, least through remission and indolence. Some calamity suddenly overtakes us. So there's a place where we must have responsibility in prayer. If a man learns to be responsible in prayer, not only responsible for prayer, but gets to the point where he's responsible in prayer, that man in prayer can start to produce results in prayer. They easily get answers in prayer because it's not just a place of prayer, it's a place where they are responsible in the prayer. You get what I'm trying to tell you? We can get to hospital and find sick men. You understand? And when we get to hospital and find sick men, we can take the responsibility of prayer and pray for those people. Okay? They might be healed, they might not be healed. But it's another place when, when I'm praying for that individual, I take responsibility in the prayer for that individual. You get where I'm coming from? So there is a place and form that starts to provide for that mind as the man starts to grow in this thing. I'll give you an example. A man comes to our Lord and Savior Jesus and tells him, your friend Lazarus is sick. And Jesus says, the sickness of Lazarus shall not end in death. He is not going to die. You get what I'm trying to tell you? 
At that particular point, Jesus is not saying Lazarus is not going to die because he's keeping a responsible profile to pray. You understand? Why am I saying so? We have not seen that when he said that, he had yet prayed. You get it? So are you understanding the difference between responsible to prayer and responsible in prayer? You get it? That you will go past the form of just the religious ideas of prayer, of squeezing your head, praying for endless hours, and you still don't produce results. You're likened to a scripture that speaks of men who have indulged in meats wherein they profit them not, that use them. So you're in meats that don't profit you. You're making a prayer that is useless. You go to prayer mountain every other day, and you still don't have the results a man who is on the mountain should get. There are many people on the prayer mountains right now fulfilling the responsibility of prayer, but irresponsible in prayer. Or rather, insensitive to the responsibility in prayer. You get where I'm coming from? If I have the responsibility of prayer, I align the responsibility of healing based on my prayer. You get it? But when I start to enter into the responsibility of prayer, inside the responsibility of prayer, I also align everything, more than just to my prayer, but to my attitude in prayer. You get where I'm coming from? But don't worry, I'll explain that. So give me an example. Jesus says, they tell him, your friend Lazarus is sick, he's going to die. Jesus says, ah, oh, the guy's sickness is not going to end in death. Okay? But Lazarus what? Dies. You see that? When Lazarus dies, Jesus is not bothered. Because he made a certain statement saying, his sickness is not going to end in death. At that particular point, Jesus took responsibility of Lazarus' life. You get it? That is not the responsibility of prayer. That is responsibility in prayer. He took responsibility of the man's life. To a point where Jesus is sure, because I have said he's not going to die, he's not going to die. Now, Lazarus dies. And it's true, Lazarus dies. But because Jesus still has the responsibility of life, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He's very sure I die, no matter what the guy wrote four days, he's going to come back, and you realize he's not going to rebuke a spirit of death. He'll just tell the guy, Lazarus, come forth. Why? Because he has the responsibility of Lazarus' life. You get what I'm trying to tell you? That is why at the point of Lazarus, you realize he's thanking. Eh? He's not thanking because he said raise him up. He's thanking because the Father gave him responsibility over the life of Lazarus. That is responsibility in prayer. You get what I'm trying to tell you? If you have that kind of responsibility in prayer, then you are now getting to the whole line of prayer called two, the watchings. Watch ye and pray. Pray, the Bible says, with watchings therein. Praise the Lord. So we're not only called to pray, we're also called to watch because the watching is taking responsibility in the prayer, not only for the prayer or to pray, but in the prayer. That means when I'm indulging in praying, I am responsible for the results that must come out entirely. I must take responsibility of what is happening inside the system while I'm praying. It doesn't matter how many men are praying. I don't want to rely on another man's faith. I want to rely on my faith. We can all join hands and we are praying. That's wonderful. Contribute your part, but I'm relying most on what I believe because I don't know what's in your head. You might be saying, well, you are praying, man. Are you not really what? Praying. So are we okay at that particular point? So when he says, watch here and pray that you enter not temptation, he's saying that if you have the responsibility in prayer, are you hearing me? You can't enter Erasmus, temptation. You can't enter affliction. You can't enter failure. You can't be an experiment. That's why he says Perasmus also uses the word experiment. Some people are used as experimentation. <laughs> they are victims of experimentation. Anything in the spirit 
uses them as samples of experimentation. If the acid burns, it has to burn them. You get what I'm trying to tell you. Because they experiment. So he says that you enter not trials. You enter not temptations. You enter not province. You don't enter that life. God wants to save you from the line of affliction. He wants to save you from the line of attack while you're a prayer person. An internal temptation to sin. Uh -huh. Is there any other? Of temptation by which the devil sought to divert Jesus and Messiah. Is there any other? Of the condition of things or a mental state by which we are enticed to sin or to elapse from the faith and holiness. Is there any other? The trial of man's fidelity, integrity, virtue and constancy. Next line. An enticement of sin temptation, whether arising from the desires or from the outward circumstances. Next. A trial proving the trial made of you by my bodily condition. Hallelujah. But are we at part to this level? The responsibility in what? In prayer. That you don't get what? Afflicted. Hallelujah. I was sharing with a certain friend of mine and I was telling them, sometimes I fail to understand why the people who pray most seem to be most afflicted, most tempted, most destroyed. Okay? Now I didn't say because I didn't know. I just said to have a conversation. Okay? But on this platform, I can tell you, one of the biggest reasons as to why many men are still afflicted, even in the line of prayer, they don't what? They don't watch. They don't watch. So then, what is watching? Watching is being alert. Watching is being sensitive to the responsibility in prayer. Are we together at that level? So then, how do we watch? Psalm 63 verse 6. He says, when I remember thee upon my bed, are you hearing me? And meditate on thee in the watches. He says, I meditate on thee in the watches. Watch is watching. Intentionally saying, being alert in prayer, being sensitive and careful in prayer. You understand? And how do you be sensitive and alert in prayer? Meditation. Very simple. Very simple. So, the entity watching is the substance, meditation. The entity watching is the substance, meditation. Many people pray, but they do not meditate in prayer. They do not meditate in prayer. But it says, watch ye also and pray. That's what the Bible says. Watch ye also and pray that you enter not temptation, that you don't fail in results, that you don't fail, that you're not enticed to sin. For that which is not done in faith is what? Sin. You actually lose the entity called faith to open the blind eye. Why? Because you do not watch. Some of you just pray, but you do not watch. Temptation is just beyond a lie. Temptation is when you're enticed to sin, and Paul tells you that that which is not done in faith is sin. So actually, the place of temptation is a place where you can't function in faith. Or it's a place where your faith doesn't work. You get where I'm coming from? The place where you pray, you pray, you pray, but whatever you pray does not produce results. You get where I'm coming from? But he's telling you the only way to produce results in prayer is watch ye and pray. Pray ye and watch. Colossians say, pray and watch in the same. And the place of watching in the same is the place of meditation in prayer. And the place of meditation in prayer, as the book of Psalms is, in his word. For example, if I'm praying for a sick person, Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and bind and destroy that spirit of infirmity. But in my spirit, I'm meditating. Because meditation can only be the word. Meditation is not imagining them healed. Meditation is seeing through the word. You get it? So while I'm closing my eyes like this, the word runs in my spirit. He was wounded for transgressions. That's meditating. You understand? I start to think on his wounding. For my transgression. I start to think for his bruising, for my iniquities. I start to think the chastisement of my peace upon him. I start to think by his stripes we were healed. And while I meditate, the Spirit of God starts to speak.
to explain what I'm meditating. Because you see, God can never speak to a man who doesn't know how to meditate. The most underlying principle of meditation is that men will hear the voice. And the place of the voice of God coming to your spirit while meditating is to explain the scripture and expound. Why? Because he knows if he brings the excess lines of opening up your eyes, flooding them with light. For the entrance of your word brings light. The word there for light is illumination. The word there for illumination is the same as revelation. The word has the end of its results on revelation because the Greek word for revelation is God's redemptive power. It comes with a power. The inevitability of the word is in revelation. It must work if it is revealed. It must work if you see just beyond wounded for transgression. Because I hear people praying, but they don't even know why they're praying. Father, you say you are for transgression, you are breastfeeding, you can the church of the Baptist, but it's inside their meditation. They say, my God, this is a big swelling. My God, this is a big swelling. My God, it's so big. How will it disappear? My, you are wounded. I refuse. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Then they start to quote scripture. The Bible says, the night among them shall say, I am sick. And then, you know, inside their meditation, they're looking at the swelling. They're looking at the person dying. They're looking at the person failing. But on top, they know how to speak. They've mastered prayer code one, <laughs> but they're failing in prayer code two. They've mastered the art of confessing right. Have you been around people say, Apostle, I have confessed right. I have believed right. I have done all these things, but how come I don't see answers in my life? Sister, you have not understood prayer code two. A true meditation cannot cause a man to confess failure. Because in your constant lines of meditation, you could not have meditated it has failed. It could be delayed, but you can't meditate it has failed. That's why when this man says his sickness shall not end in death, he doesn't care whether the guy is buried for four days. It's none of his business. His meditation is still showing Lazarus alive sharing food with him. You get what I'm trying to tell you. It cannot die if you have not killed it here. It can't die if you have not killed it in your, your mind. And that's why when David's son died, the scripture actually uses the word, and David perceived that the child was dead. That's when the child died. Before David perceived the child dead, the child wasn't dead. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. That business has not failed until you start to see it fail. That relationship has not failed until you started seeing it fail. That life did not fail until you started seeing it failing. That body has not failed to get in line until you started seeing it like it failed to get in line. So actually, the reason why you don't get results now or you don't have the results that you need is because there is a particular point where you prayed for so long and then you started to see that your prayer has not produced the results and that's the point where the man has not really meditated because your meditation can't lead you to that end. Meditation can't lead you to the end of failure. So when a Christian comes and says, Oh pastor, I have meditated, I have confessed the word over and over, but how come I don't have results? I tell them exactly that particular statement of I don't have results is the very reason as to why you're bound. Because the God you're dealing with can get a man out of the grave. Yours even ain't dead, it's just threatening to die. Yours has not actually been buried. It's just threatening to be buried and you're worried. You get what I'm trying to tell you? But I'm telling you of a God who will even allow it to rot four days such that you know that by normal science, a dead body for four days has a certain smell, has a certain form, has a certain stance, has a certain nature. But out of that, he enters to that place and his meditations are still in the simplicity. Come out, boy, let's have lunch. It's not, my God, this is four days. Ay, 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 ay. Shuck, lanza, lanza. Because now that means you have to go into the intensity. Pray so much. Let me make a confession. There are people who call me under pressure. I don't pray under pressure. If you want me to pray for you, call me and laugh. <laughs> Papa, my father is sick. <laughs> but that's as I say, he's about to die. There I'll pray. But call me and say, Musumba, Musumba, Pastor, Banange, Pastor, pray. Pastor, you don't know what is happening here. Pastor, pray. I tell him, let me pray. I promise God is my witness. I don't pray. Because they crushed the lines of meditation. Who took them there? The Bible says it works for us a more weightier glory while we look 
not at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. I am a man who lives in the eternal plains. So when you tell me he's dying, and it's not justifiable, I already prove it by the Spirit. And if I'm proving it by the Spirit that he's not dying in my spirit, and you're telling me he's dying, but you're killing him already. So I can't respond to that spirit and its pressure to cause me to pray. Because I'll pray in unbelief. I'll kill him faster. That is why some of you, when you pray in prayer, Oh my God, oh my God, I pray they don't find me. That's when they find you. <laughs> why? Because the Bible says, We which have believed have entered into this rest. So resting is not a format application that comes in our spirit every time pressure comes. Resting is a permanent, constant place. Regardless of what news you get me, I don't move. Your son has got an accident. He's in a hospital. They are putting on a drip. Oh God, oh God, I must leave now. This, this is my son. This, you don't understand. This is, no, 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 no. No. The man who meditates can't think that way. The man who meditates cannot think that way. So when we don't think that way, they say, the man of God doesn't care. How can you tell him that I have got this is even one who says, Papa me. I got annoyed for some time. I called you one time when I was stuck and you didn't come in. I wanted to ask her, did you die? But I said, I can't see the case. I carried my cross. I carried my what? My cross of not doing what? Being as sensitive as she was. Listen, I hate it when you make issues serious. Never call me when your issue is serious. Or oh, if it is serious, call me and make it seem a bit unserious. It doesn't matter the state. What doesn't move God should never move you. Etita was a yes to rot a chukubuzanga to row. Etita was a yes to mirembe the chukubuzanga mirembe. If Jesus hasn't lost peace, you don't lose peace. You get it? If Jesus hasn't lost appetite, eat a karanda la senebala. If Jesus has not even shaken on his chair, don't shake. That's why we always think that we are moved by the word. We're not moved by anything. We're moved by the word. We're not moved by anything. No, what does the word say? That's the only thing that can make me uncomfortable. If it's not in the word, it can't make me uncomfortable. It can't move me. It doesn't matter how serious it is. I don't respond on promptings of pressure. I respond on the finished work of Christ. Period. Lazarus' sickness shall not end in death. There is a patient assurance that sits in my spirit that regardless of what you think, I expect my desired result. Except if you interrupt and start conflicting with my faith. And then we are, though we are fighting each other. I'm saying they are healed. Musumba, no, pray more, but pray more. Some people have a demon. It's a demon. I mean, you even finish and say, Apostle, this is happening. I tell them it's well. Hey, it is well. Amen. Anyway, make a prayer. I've said it is well. I've said it is well. Don't waste my time. Why? Because I spoke it from a meditation angle. I didn't speak it from your level. I'm not speaking a faith to produce results. I'm speaking a faith with already produced results. That's the difference. That's why we see. I have a friend here in this room. So we're talking about something. So he told me about a certain deal and blah, blah, blah. I shared with the guy. I told him, I, I see all of these things, but this one I don't see it. That was even before we prayed. Because I'm a watcher. I'm naturally a watcher. You get what I'm trying to tell you? One time somebody came and then they said, Papa, I want to talk to you. I said, yeah, you want to talk to me. But the way she wanted to talk to me seemed like, eh? <laughs> said, yeah. So I don't know what's up. She tells me, I wanted to tell you about, uh, I mentioned the guy's name. <gasps> How did you know Papa Mawacha? <laughs> Mawacha. She says, yeah, Papa, yeah, we started. I told her, dump him. <laughs> what? I told her, no, he ain't the one. I told her, so up square, Tomala Budde, Mawacha. Tomala Budde. Because I mentioned the name, meaning I know more. Don't waste your time. She stuck on until things failed. It was sad. She said, no. 
she stuck on hard faith applied until <laughs> faith got to the end of application and before I know it <laughs> I say, come here my baby come here mm-hmm. what's up what have they done to you I don't believe you. <laughs> ah, listen to your father <laughs> let me tell you how it works when you're working with a man who meditates too much in the world and you tell him I'm moving out with Nixon when that word Nixon comes to the man it comes to the judgments of truth. It doesn't come to the, let me think about it affair, or is he born again? By the way, ladies, I hope you're past even born again, because some born again guys are also funny. Come on, help me somebody here. Some guys are born again, but they're not really born again. They are born again, but they are so funny born again. They are born again, but they don't think the way born again guys think. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's even worse when you're a great girl and you find a legal boy. Kalandele, Kalandele. You're trusting God to enter houses you never built. He thinks he must build every house. You start fighting each other. Yet in actual sense, the two of you love each other, but the problem is Ishmael and Isaac are fighting. That's why when a woman comes and says, Ah, Papa, I want to marry. Uh, he's not yet spiritual, but I will change him. I tell him, darling, if he's not yet changed, tomorrow would be. If you don't change him before marriage, don't prove to me you can change him after you're married. H-O-T-T. Wrong story. Pick up another piece. Pick up another what? Piece. So my auntie, you can't see. To demo muto. Charlie muto. I don't know whether I'm helping somebody. So when you're committing things to a spiritual person, you commit them to truth. You don't just commit them for him to say, ah, let me see, hmm, is he tall, is he brown, uh-uh, no, 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 no. No. Because truth can see who is who. There are some people who are rich now and they're going to be poor 10 years to come. And we see it. You get it? So you come and I tell you, you know what? Chite. Kiwaya, but I love him, Chite. I'm tired of poverty. I'm going to pack my bags. But why? You didn't listen. You didn't listen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because our ardent line as men is actually responsibility. That one, we can be anything, but we cannot be irresponsible. So women, you know. And if you're a guy and you're here and you're not tithing and you're married, you'll hit shipwreck. You'll knock one day and your business will crumble. And then you'll carry a long face. And then you'll come to the Rasumba to lay hands on you. And then your children will suffer. Listen, you can't dodge God forever. One day you'll hit a sea. I promise you, by the anointing upon my life, if you don't obey the spiritual principles, one day you will ask for prayer financially. And we won't pray for you. (laughs) We'll tell you. Teresa Makubo go. Listen, finances don't have prayer. You either do or you don't. Because they come from a place of faith. If you believe so much that you're blessed, why don't you believe so much to give him his tenth? Tenth? But you see, a person is not faithful with 60 million and they are confessing, I take 400 million in the name of Jesus Christ. My business must go through, I promise. Even if you get it, it will die. Because now, when you enter grace, you actually realize that tithe is a small thing. That is why some of you should understand why certain people in a few years are going to be crazy rich. In a few years, some are going to be crazy rich. You get it, friends? Right? Why? Because it won't be formula for uh, they prayed a lot, but they understood how it works. You must know how to get money. You get what I'm trying to tell you? You can't continue striving in this world over those small things. So when words are submitted, they are submitted against what? Truth. To a man who has learned the whole form of meditation. Meditation is a place where the truth of God constantly vibrates through your soul and revolves in your mind. What you meditate in your heart will always revolve around your mind. That's why the essence of meditation is that whatever is in the heart starts to have an effect of revolving in the mind. So your mind constantly thinks what your heart has settled as the word of God. 
You get it? I went to pray for a certain man once. He had cancer. He was dead in a, one lung was dead. Totally dead. Cancer. Totally dead. And he was coughing. Blood. What? I found him on oxygen and all these things. And they told me, oh, he's going to die and everything. And um, the doctors didn't have much to what? To do. So I lay hands on this man. And after laying hands on this man, I tell them he's going to live and he's not going to die. Next time we go back after two weeks with Pastor Zach, they are discharging the man. He's healed. You get it? But I remember after praying for him, one of the relatives comes with me and then she says, I saw him in a dream and he was doing like this and he was going up the stairs. Now, <laughs> the man who doesn't meditate on again, God showed me that this guy, you see what I'm trying to tell you? Because in the dream she saw the guy going up the stairs. Up the stairs. <laughs> and then after that, the weak prophet says, the Lord had showed me that she was going to die. So when we were coming out of the hospital, the woman told me, I saw him going up the stairs. But I didn't understand how the dream meant. But I love the way she said. She said, it seems he was showing me that the Lord is elevating his health. I told her, that's it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Because my prayer can't just die far. <laughs> Am I making sense? Before we know it, the man is discharged. But some of you, you see this auntie die. You also dream you had death. You dream every... Quick, you provide for everything outside the word. You're not led by dreams. You're led by the Holy Spirit. And the testimony of the Holy Spirit is the word. Number one, never release a guy who is below 70. Because the word is very clear that the life of a man is 70. By reason of strength, the moment he's below 70... It's not God's will for that man to die. Settle it in your head. The Bible says, but by reason of strength, it is 80 and 90. If by reason of strength. You get it? Now, for a man who is above 70, my principle is he must die strong. He must not die sick. So I don't say, I surrender him, God is 70. And I mean, I surrender, he called me, oh, the man has died at 90. I say, hey, how did he die? He slept, huh? That one I don't even say so. Ramazi, he has finished. End of story. You get it? End of what? Story. But a man, even if you ate it, still don't. No. No. Tell your neighbor no. no. Tell them no. no. We don't kick buckets. We slip into eternity. The easiest way. Why? Because I've always moved by the principle, the silences preach deeper. The silences preach what? Deeper. The total sum of a man's ministry is not what he does in the pulpit. And some people actually also quote that line wrongly because they had it also spoken by another man wrongly. They say, your ministry is not in the pulpit. It is outside the pulpit. What do you do in your community? That's not what they mean. This is how it's supposed to be. It means that when you're in the pulpit, you're only demonstrating what is in your closet. And likewise, when you're off the pulpit, you also demonstrate what's in your closet. The principle is closet. The silences will produce more results than the audible line of everything that comes out. Empty teens, not the loudest noise. You look at poor people. When you're around people who speak too much about money, always remember, Always remember, heavy carriages make no noise. They make no noise. If you're driving a Fuso car and it's empty, everything is... Why? Because it's empty. That's why it's talking. But if it is full of goods, rich men are a bit quiet about everything they have. But poor people, everything... Now go say yes, Simo. Must you tell everyone everything? <laughs> Unless you're telling a close friend. Close friend is okay. Because you have a certain line of understanding. The very rich one even forgets it. They remind themselves. It's better when men discover. Tell anybody it's better when men discover. That you are actually anointed. That spirit, eh? 
A man stands on the pulpit and he starts to say, I am uh, a senior consultant of the senior advisory salary development, Zinela population, Zinela Zaland, Zinela financials, Zinela. So by the time the guy is through, all the levels he has confessed the secretaries to go through before you reach to the big man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get on the pulpit, tell him, praise God. I'm called Brian. Let's open our Bibles. By the time you're through, you'll be an apostle prophet. <laughs> be simple, anger, you're deep. Get to places. The Bible says, submit yourselves unto one another when you find a man of God. Oh, say this guy is deep. A man will get a few wings and say, yeah, he knows that I'm deep. Yeah, say it. Say it. Let him preach. Be very humble. Let him sit down. He might even be too late to sit near someone because you can't help him. He goes out very well. Tell them open your Bibles. By the time they are through, they will honor you. Don't get to places of claiming. Oh, you know me. You see, even me, I've raised 10 dead bodies. You know, I've opened the blind eyes. Don't claim the 10 old blind eyes you open. Look for blind available eyes there. <laughs> and let's begin from there. You understand what I'm telling you? You know, I have seen God all my years. are wonderful. Those are monuments. Come to present test. Tell me what is fresh. Because that's what I want. Heavy courages don't want. They don't make noise. They just produce results. They don't make noise. They just what? Produce results. The essence of watching is meditation. The essence of meditation is truth. Constantly thinking on the word. I don't expect a church member now to come to me and tell me I am looking for a job. Come and tell me, Apostle, let's thank God for my new job that is about to come. That's wonderful. I'll pray with you so with faith. Because it means you have not erred in speech. But number two, you have meditated on a God who can deny you the job. The word of God has shaped enough thought in your spirit to confess certain things anymore. So yes, we are wonderful with confession, but let's also get wonderful with meditation. Okay, you're wonderful with I will not die, but let's get wonderful with understanding which scripture we use when we are thinking that we shall not die. Remember those days when I was sick, I used to say one thing on me. I'll go to my grave full of age like a stalk of wheat, in its season. I crammed it. And when I'm on my bed, I imagine. And that stock of wheat in its season, full of eggs. And then I see my children. I see my grandchildren. I see me playing with them. I see them celebrating my birthday. And I'm blowing candles. You don't have to tell you. But it began from Job. It just didn't come out of the new age. No, no, no. It's not No, no, no. It's the word. I have a basis from where I come from. Of which it is impossible for God to lie. That is the guarantee that you're not lying in thought. Because you're aligning yourself to what is true. Hallelujah. So, let's go past, because you expect to have a job, imagine yourself working. No, let's get to a point of, because you expect yourself to have a job, go through the word and provide for it, such that when you start acting it, it comes from a provisional basis of truth. That's watching. That is watching. Always have a word for every line and action of faith that you are taking, and always think it in your spirit. Give it time. Some of you would be so far if you could only even spend 15 minutes just thinking on one scripture. Do you know why revelation is not in the spirits of men? Men are insensitive. They are insensitive to the responsibility of waiting upon the ministration of the spirit to explain things because they don't give the Holy Spirit time to think through things and allow him to speak. That's the principle of meditation. The Bible says, while Peter pondered on the vision, the Spirit said, three men come seeking for you. The Spirit could have not told him, three men come seeking for you, if he had not given opportunity to ponder on the vision. If he saw it in the spirit realm and just let it like some of you just dream certain things and leave them there. God would not have ministered to him. 
Some of your dreams have even come more than two times. The Lord says that a dream comes twice seeking establishment. If it is of the Lord, the Bible says you shall surely establish it. If I dream something twice, I don't even pray about it. I say, God, thank you. Too much but if I dream it twice also, and I realize that it is of the devil, I realize that this guy has gone a step ahead. I also fix it. You get where I'm coming from? Do you get where I'm coming from? So the Bible says, while Peter thought, Acts 10, 19, while Peter thought, maybe tainted, on the what? On the vision. The Spirit said. When he thought, the Spirit said. And why did the Spirit say? Behold, see it, see it, see it. Three men come. Now, if Peter was not a man who fought on vision, three men would have come and said, what, what do you guys want? Uh -huh, what do you want? Uh -huh, I'll go, maybe uh, you see I'm trying But do you realize that the house of Cornelius was saved that day because Peter had a place of meditation? Peter watched in prayer. Because the scriptures tell us he was up praying and fasting. He was in a fasting and prayer mode. And then the vision comes from above with a suit of four-legged animals. You get it? But it was a place of prayer. But he needed a place of also watchings. Because the watchings would explain the deeper picture of divine purpose pertaining what you're praying for. Some of you are praying, but as you're praying and you go through the word, you compare this guy with the word and you realize the two are not the same. But you're still insisting. Why? You've guessed him against truth. It doesn't matter how much humble he is. He's not humble against the truth. Chill it. Move on. You know what I'm saying? And there are those ones who, when you guess against truth, they are so aligned. But they don't look stable now. There are certain people that you don't see them there. Tomorrow they will be there. It's also the line of truth. It's also the line of truth. Hallelujah. But if you move by sight, mama, mama, <laughs> you'll see. You look at this. You ask somebody. Praise the Lord. We we'll move by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So while Peter thought on the vision, on the spirit says, and I tell people, for every man that meditates, the spirit will always speak. And the spirit can only speak of the word of God. It can't speak outside the word of God. So you see where I'm coming from? The spirit will always speak from the word of God. That is why it's important to already have the word of God in your spirit and then you start to meditate therein. That's watching. Because the watchings are what you meditate thereon, the spirit will explain. And what is explained is a place of meditation. And your place of meditation is a place of revelation. Because what the spirit will explain in your meditation will be revelation. And that revelation will deliver you. The woman had spent five years without a job and a half. Five years, nobody, nobody could employ her. She came from Fanero, son of Tera. She moved out. She says, I reached the guy and I said, I am not a daughter of Tera. She got a job the next day. <laughs> after five years. After five years. She just made one sudden, I am not a daughter of Tera. But son, daughter Tera was a meditation. So if I had not meditated it, it could not have gotten another job. And that's how we answer. That's how we answer. That's the true spirit of answering. Because you give answers to men. You give results to men. You give a way through for men. You give a breakthrough for men. That's how we minister. But there are certain men who are not patient to listen. Because every time they're the prince of God, Mafuta, Mafuta, Chisa, Yesu. You heard of that guy in prayer mountain. He was just speaking one line, Siri Nkoko Ndimpungu. Siri Nkoko Ndimpungu. Siri Nkoko Ndimpungu. For those of you who don't know Luganda, he means, I'm not a chicken, I am a what? I'm not a chicken, but I'm an eagle. Now, I could not understand how a guy can just spend the whole day, in fact, even the thought that he's a mother hen or a cock. I, how did it cross his head? Child of God? Child of the Most High? He was meditating. How did a cock come into his head? 
Because I can't meditate and I think of myself as a bird. I can't. When he says Siri, he says I'm not a cock. It means there's something that has been telling him every day in his meditation. You're a cock. You are a cock. Chicken. Mother hen. He's meditating and he's seeing himself. How did you get it? How did it enter even your head? Have you ever thought sometimes that the things you think are too stupid to think them? There's one I know. <laughs> His meditation says, I'm not a chapati. I'm a champion. I'm not a chapati. I'm a champion. I think they were so beaten down, shaken together, running over like the blessing, and then they were put on fire, and then they turned them down, and then they displayed them, and then men ate them. Now they look at their life, you see they're like a chapati. And so they say, I'm not a chapati. I'm a champion. I'm not a chapati. I'm not a champion. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Who said you're a chapati? How did you even think? That is why you can't say, I shall not fail in my exams. Why did you even give the provision of there is a possibility of failing that you're refusing? Say, I don't fail. Just say, I don't fail. Because it's not in my nature to fail. When you get your exams, I don't fail. When you enter interview, you say, I don't fail. When the results come back and you fail, you say, I don't fail. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. Praise the Lord Jesus. So when you meditate against the truth, the spirit will always explain. And the moment he has explained, it's revelation. And the moment it's revelation, it's an answer. Five years is little. There's another one. She had spent 17 years unemployed. 17. One prayer got her to work. Why? Because it's meditation. I don't pray for her as according to how much power I have and the words. No. I pray as according to a truth of which it is impossible for God to lie. Always get a portion of scripture and round it around what you want. That is holding God to his word. That's why he tells Timothy, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear and to all. Everyone will see you and they say, she's profiting. Financially, she's profiting. In her marriage, she's profiting. You can't say, in the name of Jesus, I will get married. He says in Isaiah, look in the book. Look at how Isaiah said it. He says, search through the book. You shall find that none shall lack her mate. He didn't say none shall lack a mate. He says none shall lack her mate. He's already yours. Kana dewo kama nzala mu kama mfumbirwe ngolinga uwaza atari yo. Obo ni nechi zibu kumutwe. You understand what I'm saying? He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. None. For my mouth it has commanded and his spirit it has gathered them. So, even though you don't see a man in your life, you're already gathered to a certain guy. So, you're not saying, God, give me a husband, apostle. In my family, nobody gets married. You're still a part of that family. You come unto Zion, the city of God, company of innumerable angels, spirits of just men made perfect. Family is a fumbiro as if I'm You read in the book, search in the book. There is no family that doesn't get married in Isaiah. No family doesn't get married according to our circle. So that kind of woman should be like, God, I thank you for my husband, who I'm already espoused to by the Spirit, who you already joined me with before I even met him. Thank God for my husband, who is already there, that he will quicken now to open the question. Be in that angle. Don't say, Don't say, Don't say, Don't say, Don't say, Don't Don't say, Don't say, Don't say, Don't know how men he says, I love you, you'll come back, he doesn't come back. I don't know what is wrong with me. He is not yours. Yours will stay. Why? Is that, he says, Sandalaba Satana. The Bible says, He maintaineth my loss. Your husband, 24 hours, is under maintenance by the Holy Ghost. Likewise, your wife. Then you say, God, I need a wife. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Meditate. When that kind of person meditates on that portion and says, Lance, I want her mate. 
She already sees herself espoused before wedding. Wedding becomes just an outward profiting evident to all men because she meditated and gave herself wholly to these things. Your husband is arrested by Isaiah. Your husband is not arrested by Simanya, some guy who is putting him under Simanya cameras and what surveillance. No, no, no. He's arrested by Isaiah 34, 16. That is what has arrested the guy. Because he has multiple girls, but what? You're tying them on poles instead of tying them on Isaiah 34, 16. I tie them. I tie him on a tree. I tie him on a tree. Musiba kasuri. Musiba kasuri. Musiba kasuri. Musiba kasuri. Tagenda. Tatumula walala. Tatumula mkazimulala. Shut up! Tie them to Isaiah 34, 16. You say, you guy, I tie you. <laughs> Meditate on these things holy that your profiting may be evident among all. Watch means meditate. Raise your hands and speak to Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Venero. Venero, make manifest.